Hi guys, welcome back. If I'm audible and visible, please send your thumbs up in the chat box. Okay, do good. Thank you. So let's start. An academy is launching many courses for NEET PG. First, we will be having this IPL INICT Premier League. Here we will be discussing top 20 topics. So on 1st April, it was Biochemistry 1. On 2nd April, it was Biochemistry Part 2. On the 3rd April, Pathology 1. 4th April, Pathology Part 2. 5th April, Microbiology Part 1. 6th, Macrobiology Part 2. On the 7th April, it was Ops and Gyni, 8th Ops and Gyni Part 2. On 9th and 10th, we will be having surgery discussions. So 9th and 10th, surgery discussions. Clear? You can excel your pathology and microbiology preparation with Patho Micro Punch Badge by Dr. Preeti Sharma. And this is starting on the April 4th. Get your store subscription at 3000 rupees only, which is available at an academy store and you can use my code Dr. Pritesh for this subscription. Last mile for FMG students, last mile FMG preparation FMG for FMG 2023, it is available on an academy store. The duration is three months and there will be 200 plus hours. So you can get your store subscription at 4950. Here also you can use my code Dr. Pritesh for the subscription. We have NEET PG Mega Bundle up to three here. You will get up to three months free extension on your NEET PG subscription. So you will be getting NEET PG Live plus NEET PG Vitals means recorded lectures will be there. Simultaneously, you will be getting printed notes also. So get extension on combo and live recorded plus notes 1.2 worth 7,500 on six months and 18 months subscription. So you can subscribe now and use my code Dr. Pritesh. This offer is available till April 8th. <coughs> INICT June 2023 All India Mock Test. It's free test for all medical aspirants. So you can get a chance to win exciting scholarships. The test will be conducted on 16th of April 2023, 9 a.m. onwards. You can enroll for this All India Mock Test of INICT. Pursue your ambi ambitions with AIM next NEET PG. Here, next focused integrated subject approach will be there, 200 plus classes and 400 plus hours of recorded lecture will be there. High yield MCQ practice by top educators. And here also you will get notes 1.0 rupees 7,500 free with NEET PG combo live. And this starts from March 28th, the duration is of nine months. You can get this combo subscription at 21,580 and you can use my code Dr. Pritesh for this subscription. Okay, so guys, let's start. Okay, this is famous image based question. Can you tell me what is the diagnosis? I'm waiting for your reply. This is one and this is two. What is the diagnosis in one? In one, what is the diagnosis? Yes. In one, pudi orange. Very Somi Maria baby pudi orange. Very good. So in one you can see there is pudi orange. What? There is pudi orange. In two also there is pudi orange. In the second image also there is pudi orange. Can you tell me what is this? Tell me additional sign here. Additional sign. Dharmendra Kumar Mishra Bindu Kumari. Yes, all of you are correct. What is this additional sign? Tell me. Guys, this is, again this is pure orange, this is pure orange, apart from this, this is additional sign, yes, retracted nipple, okay. So whenever these questions are asked, you just look, this is pure orange and what is the cause of pure orange, you know, there are lymphatic vessels and there is permeation by tumor cells. So lymphatic obstruction by tumor cells, it leads to pure orange, clear. Now you can see this image, tell me, what is this sign? 
What is the name of? This is 1. This is 2. First tell me 1. What is this sign? You can see the skin depression in the breast skin. There is skin depression in the breast skin. What is this sign? Very good Shambhavi. Very good. Appu Hariharan. Swami Maria baby. Yes. Priyanka S. This is dimpling. So very good. Most of you are correct. This is dimpling. Now tell me guys. What is this? Here. In the second image you can see. What is this? There is wrinkling in the breast skin. What is this wrinkling? What is the name? Bindu Kumari, you are correct. It is puckering. So, Bindu Kumari, you are correct. This is puckering. Clear? So, one is dimpling and the second is puckering. And you know that both of these signs are because of involvement of which ligament? Osama Sheikh, Ambu, Dr. Aru, all of you are correct. Both of these signs are because of involvement of which structure? Tell me, guys. <coughs> ligament of Cooper, Appu Hariharan. It is ligament of Cooper. So, both of these signs are because of involvement of ligament of Cooper. There is involvement of ligament of Cooper. Now, this one. Can you tell me what is the name of this sign? You can see here, there are multiple nodules. There are ulceration involving breast skin and chest wall. Multiple nodules and ulceration involving breast skin and chest wall. What is the name of this sign? Osama, Osama Sheikh. Tell me, <coughs> Lalia Ayubi, Sherin, yes? No, no, this is not inflammatory breast cancer. Multiple, it is not inflammatory breast cancer. Multiple nodules or ulceration in the breast skin and chest wall. Tell me, what is the name of this sign? This is not Paget's, no, 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 Dr. Loscaljo, no. Okay, let me tell you, this is known as cancer in cuirass. What's the name? Name of the sign, this is cancer in cuirass. This is cancer in cuirass. So, here you can see that there are multiple nodules and ulceration. Multiple nodules and ulceration, it is involving what? Breast, skin and chest wall. Multiple nodules and ulceration involving breast, skin and chest wall. Clear? Another sign. Ankit Gurjar, you are correct. This is cancer in cuirass. Okay? Now, tell me, what is this investigation? Guys, tell me. What is the name of this investigation? <clears throat> Ankit, Osama Sheikh, Sherin, tell me. Name of this investigation, Loscaljo mammography. Everybody is correct. It's mammography. Another question, tell me. This is mammography showing benign lesion or in this case there is malignancy. The lesion is benign or it's malignant. PK. Laila Ayubi. This is showing benign lesion or malignant. Yes. All of you are correct that this is. Okay. Now, see whether it's, be, it's benign or malignant. How to differentiate? Very, very easy. Have a look. First, you have to check nipple. Can you see the nipple? Nipple should be like this. Clear? But what is the problem? You can see here. In this image, you can see that nipple is retracted. So, first finding here, you can see there is retracted nipple. Second thing, what you can see? You can see here that there is irregular opacity. Opacity is there which is having irregular margin. Third, what else you can see? There is microcalcification. Clear? So, what? In this image you can see that there is retracted nipple, opacity with irregular margin and there is microcalcification. Now, tell me guys, this is benign or malignant? <coughs> benign or malignant? This is malignant. Clear? This is malignant. So, this is malignancy. Why? Because the opacity is having irregular margin. There is microcalcification, and you know this microcalcification. It is seen in what? It is seen in malignancy. There is retract <coughs> retracted nipple that is also seen in malignancy. Okay. Malignancy. Now see, guys, this one. Tell me what is the diagnosis here? What kind of calcification you can see in this image? Again, mammography. This female is young. You can see there are lots of 
areas which are black lots of black areas very good kishore kumar you are correct kishore kumar you are correct it's popcorn calcification and what is the diagnosis it is fibroadenoma so you can see this is popcorn calcification this is popcorn popcorn calcification and this is fibroadenoma what is the diagnosis it is fibroadenoma clear popcorn calcification fibroadenoma madhusudan ojha c arjun sandil mahale jamal dr aru sandil mahale all of you are correct this is fibroadenoma now tell me guys which investigation is being performed here you can see the surgeon is using gamma probe and here there is a bluish lymph node which investigation is being performed here yes so all of you are correct appu hariharan sherin jamal creative express this is sentinel lymph node biopsy so this is sentinel lymph node biopsy okay in sentinel lymph node biopsy there are two techniques which are used one we are using the blue dye that is lymphazurin or isosulfan blue and second we are using technetium labeled colloid clear so what happens we are using radioactive probe to localize that which lymph node is having maximum radioactivity and whenever we are giving incision we can detect the lymph node and we are sending that for sending that to pathology department so this is sentinel lymph node biopsy there are five malignancies in which there is established role of sentinel lymph node biopsy tell me guys what are those five malignancies in which there is established role of sentinel lymph node biopsy first ca breast this is carcinoma breast second malignant melanoma third carcinoma penis fourth head and neck malignancies fourth is head and neck malignancies and you tell me fifth this was asked in inict which one is the fifth fifth yes kishore kumar you are correct carcinoma vulva the fifth is carcinoma vulva five malignancies carcinoma breast malignant melanoma carcinoma penis head and neck malignancies and carcinoma vulva these are having established role of sentinel lymph node biopsy clear guys next question this patient underwent modified radical mastectomy <coughs> patient underwent modified radical mastectomy after that she developed this condition tell me what is the diagnosis very good shambhavi dr rj jamal somi maria baby all of you are correct so what happens after modified radical mastectomy you know in this simple mastectomy plus removal of level 1 and level 2 lymph node is done simple mastectomy what is mrm it is simple mastectomy plus removal of level 1 and level 2 lymph node whenever you perform lymph node dissection there is lymphatic disruption so what happens it leads to lymphatic disruption and because of this lymphatic disruption patient will be having what lymphedema so this was an image based question in inict what is the diagnosis this patient is having what lymphedema lymphedema all of you are correct healthy med talk dr jitu meena dr loskal jo all of you are correct very good now guys tell me this was asked many times <coughs> what is the diagnosis <coughs> in this case you can see what eczematous eruption around the nipple here nipple is destroyed here psoriatic lesion around nipple eczematous eruption around nipple tell me guys appuharan nisar Osama Sheikh Ankit Chaturvedi Nisha all of you are correct what this is Paget's disease of nipple so what is the diagnosis you are correct all of you this is Paget's disease of nipple Paget's disease of nipple and what happens in Paget's disease of nipple you know that there is eczematous eruption or eczematous lesion around the nipple all of you know that there is hidden malignancy in major disease of nipple tell me guys which malignancy is hidden here <coughs> waiting for your reply 
which malignancy which malignancy it's hidden underlying malignancy yes which one nishar nishar dar shambhavi sushil all of you are correct there is either dcis or there is invasive ductal cancer there is hidden dcis or invasive ductal cancer invasive ductal cancer very important point what presence of lump it's not mandatory for diagnosis of paget's disease and inflammatory breast cancer you have to remember lump presence of lump it is not mandatory for diagnosis of paget's disease of nipple and inflammatory breast cancer clear so this is paget's disease of nipple guys okay now tell me this 50 years old female who is a non lactating female 50 years is a age she presented with this kind of lesion in the breast can you tell me what is the diagnosis tell me guys what is the diagnosis here <coughs> nisar no no nisar it is not this is not philod's tumor nisar tell me very good madhusudan dogod Do sushil pal appu hariharan majority of you are correct what you can see in this breast you can see what that there are inflammatory changes involving the breast how much breast is involved more than one third of breast skin here you can see almost more than one third of breast skin it is involved by inflammatory changes age of patient is 50 years she is non lactating so what this female is having inflammatory breast cancer inflammatory breast cancer why it is called inflammatory because more than 33 percent of breast skin is involved by inflammatory changes which condition it mimics you know it mimics mastitis it mimics mastitis that's why this is also known as mastitis carcinomatosa one question for you guys tell me which type of breast cancer it is most malignant having worse prognosis waiting for your reply which type of breast cancer <clears throat> Rajiv Jain, you are correct. Which type of breast cancer is most malignant having worse prognosis? Worse prognosis. Yes, it is inflammatory breast cancer. Very good, Nisar. Somi Maria baby. All of you are correct. What? It is most malignant. This is most malignant. And the problem, it is having worse prognosis. Worst prognosis. All of you know what is the stage. This is T4D and you know it corresponds to 3B. T4D which corresponds to 3B, it means this is locally advanced breast cancer. Since you know that this is the locally advanced breast cancer, tell me what is the treatment of choice. Waiting for your reply. <coughs> Jishan Khan, you are correct. Jishan, you are correct. What is the treatment of choice? Since this is locally advanced breast cancer. Yes, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Tell me the complete treatment. Very good. Nisar Dar. Correct. What? The treatment is this <coughs> neoadjuvant chemotherapy plus MRM plus radiotherapy. So, this is the treatment for inflammatory breast cancer. We discussed here also presence of lump is not mandatory for diagnosis. Clear guys? Tell me, this is very easy question. Is the spot diagnosis? You can see affected breast is massively enlarged. Tell me the diagnosis. Tell me the diagnosis. Affected breast is massively enlarged. Yes. Jushu Noob, Philodes, very good Philodes. Everybody is correct. Do God, Sushil, Bindu, Nisar, Sandili. Mahale, all of you are correct. Very good. Rajiv Jain, Dr. Aru, Jishan Khan, everybody is correct. This is Philod's tumor. And what is the other name? It is also known as Cystosarcoma. Cystosarcoma Philod's. Cystosarcoma Philod's. How to remember? It's very easy. Just remember this sarcoma. So here, affected breast is massively enlarged. Philodes means it is having leaf-like appearance on cut section and you have to remember it like sarcoma. You know, breast cancer is having most common root of spread, lymphatic. Cystosarcoma philodes, 
or Fillot's tumor? It behaves like sarcoma. So can you tell me what is the most common route of spread? Tell me guys. <coughs> most common route of spread? Jitu, Nisardar, yes, Bharat, all of you are correct. It is hematogenous. If there is hematogenous spread, guys, tell me what is the most common site of metastasis? Yes, since there is hematogenous spread, it behaves like sarcomas, most common site of metastasis, that is lungs. It is lungs. Diagnosed by biopsy and how you treat, if there is benign cystosarcoma fillers, we go for wide local excision. And if it is malignant cystosarcoma fillers, what is sufficient? Only simple mastectomy. Only simple mastectomy. Why we are not going for modified radical mastectomy? Because you know there is no involvement of lymph node. No involvement of lymph node. Very good, Nisar, Madhusudan, Lena, Susan, all of you are correct. All of you are correct. This is cystosarcoma fillers. Remember, three structures are never involved nipple, breast, skin, chest wall. So, there is no nipple retraction, no skin fixity, no fixity to chest wall. Tumor is mobile. Clear? Next, guys, waiting for your reply. This is frequently asked image based question in NEET PG, FMG, INICT. Tell me, what is the name? What is the name of this? <coughs> waiting for your reply. Yes, Shambhavi. Most of the times, Shambhavi, you are correct. Appu Hariharan, Sushil Pal, Jishan Khan, Aru, all of you are correct. This is Maunder's disease. And what happens in Maunder's disease? Here you can see there is superficial thrombophlebitis of inframammary vein. You can see superficial thrombophlebitis of inframammary vein. So, Maunder's disease. This is Maunder's disease. Frequently asked question. This is superficial thrombophlebitis of inframammary vein. Since the vein is thrombosed, it looks like string. That is why other name is string phlebitis. Guys, can you tell me which veins are involved? Which vein is involved most commonly? Which vein is involved? I am waiting for your reply, guys. Tell me. Kishore Kumar, which vein? There is involvement of which vein? Yes, involvement of lateral thoracic and thoracoepigastric. Jishan Khan, very good. Lateral thoracic and thoracoepigastric. These are the veins which are involved. Since it is superficial thrombophlebitis, what is required? Nothing, only NSAIDs and breast support. So, we give NSAIDs and breast support. All of you are correct, guys. All of you are correct. Next, tell me, this is the famous question which is asked nowadays. Famous question. What is the diagnosis here? Waiting for your reply. Affected breast is engorged. There is iridema, redness. And the moment you give incision, this pus started coming. What is the diagnosis? Diagnosis, all of you are correct. It is breast abscess. So, this patient is having breast abscess. And you guys know that breast abscess, it is more common in lactating females who are primates. Now, question for all of you, what is the most common organism responsible? Most common organism responsible. Lena, you are correct. This is breast abscess. All of you are correct. Organism responsible. Most common staph aureus, let me see. Jishan, Chandani, Chandani Keswani. So, all of you are correct. What? This is caused by staph aureus. Staph aureus, you know what is the treatment of choice for this condition? We go for incision and drainage plus antibiotics. This question was asked in NEET PG. Tell me, guys, what is the first line agent given? Waiting for your reply. Very good, G2. G2 is one step ahead. G2 is one step ahead. We give cloxacillin or dicloxacillin. So, antibiotic, it is cloxa. Antibiotic, it is cloxacillin or we give dicloxacillin. So, this is cloxacillin or we give dicloxacillin. Clear, guys? Okay. Now, what is the diagnosis in this child? Tell me. What is the diagnosis here? Waiting for your reply. Rajiv Jain, correct. Kishore Kumar, <coughs> Karthik R. Chandra, you are correct. What is the diagnosis? Midline swelling in the anterior part of neck. Tell me, thyroglossal, let me see, Nisar Dar, first person to reply. Harita Rajesh, Dogod, Ankit Gurjar, all of you are correct. So, this is thyroglossal cyst. 
Tell me guys, what is the most common location? Thyroglossal cyst, what is the most common location? Location, most common location. Yes, moves with deglutition, most common location. Irvin, correct, most common location. Subhyoid, Harika Anand, very good. Most common location, it is subhyoid. All of you know that it is going to increase the risk of one malignancy. Waiting for your reply, which malignancy? Let me see the first person to reply. It is subhyoid or infrahyoid. Yes. Yes. Malignancy. It is going to increase the risk of one malignancy. Yes. Chandani Keswani, Chandani Keswani Nisardar. It is papillary carcinoma. Very good. Very nice interactive crowd is there. This is papillary carcinoma and somebody already replied, what is the treatment of choice? We go for cyst trunk operation. The treatment of choice for thyroglossal cyst, that is cyst trunk operation. Very good guys. Now, nowadays it's the latest hot question. They give you what? Thyroid scan. Okay. So what you can see first, this is the normal thyroid scan in which you can see there is uptake in both of the lobes. This is the image. This is the diagrammatic representation and here you can see uptake in both of the loops. Now, a nodule is considered hot whenever there is increased uptake as compared to surrounding thyroid tissue. So, here you can see there is increased uptake in one nodule as compared to surrounding thyroid tissue, decreased uptake in one nodule as compared to surrounding thyroid tissue. So, this is hot, this is cold. Question for all of you, how much is the risk of malignancy in hot nodule? Waiting for your reply. How much is the risk of malignancy? <clears throat> risk of malignancy in hot nodule. Very good. Ankit Gurjar, you are correct most of the times. Ankit, very good. It is 1 to 3 percent. Hot nodule, risk of malignancy 1 to 3 percent. 1 to 3 percent. Very low. Dharmendra, now tell me, how much is the risk of malignancy in cold nodule? Kishore, you are correct. Now, risk of malignancy in cold nodule. Tell me guys, in cold nodule, how much is the risk of malignancy? Very good. Harika Anand, Vidushi Joshi, Jishan Khan gave me the exact number. Jishan, very good Jishan, it is 17 to 20 percent. So, in cold nodule, the risk of malignancy is how much? 17 to 20 percent. Clear guys, 17 to 20, you have to remember, cold nodule is dangerous, having risk of 70 to 20 percent, hot nodule 1 to 3 percent. Now see, what is the name of Graves disease? It is known as diffuse toxic goiter. Diffuse toxic goiter, so there is increased uptake diffusely. So here you can see, in the whole thyroid gland, there is increased uptake. Sometimes you are going to notice that there are certain nodules which are having increased uptake some nodules which are having decreased uptake. So, here there is decreased uptake, here there is increased uptake, this is toxic multinodular goiter. So, in toxic multinodular goiter, multiple nodules will be there with increased as well as decreased uptake. In thyroiditis, you can see here, there is reduced uptake. So, what happens in thyroiditis, there is follicle destruction, that is why hardly less than 5 percent of radioactive iodine uptake is there. These are the latest image based questions, image based questions, latest, very good. Now guys tell me, on the basis of these images, tell me the diagnosis. Both of these images were asked in INICT, on the basis of these images, what is the diagnosis, tell me. Yes, Somi Maria Baby, Appu Hariharan, Nisardar, all of you are correct guys, all of you are correct, it is Graves. So, what you can see here, you can see that the patient is having ophthalmopathy or what is the problem, exophthalmos, patient is having exophthalmos and what else you can see, you can see here that there is pretibial myxedema, deposition of glycosaminoglycans, this is pretibial pre-tibial myxedema, there is deposition of glycosaminoglycans, pre-tibial myxedema, both of these are seen in Graves disease, Graves disease and you know, if a patient is having hyperthyroidism, 
if a patient is having hyperthyroidism just presence of eye signs are diagnosis so presence of eye signs are diagnostic in patients of graves disease who are having hyperthyroidism clear guys see this one tell me the diagnosis it's a hypothyroid patient hypothyroid patient with mild to moderate enlargement of thyroid tell me what is the diagnosis <coughs> waiting for your reply well, dr rj dr rj jishan very good jishan sushil pal chandni keshwani rajiv jain all of you are correct i gave you the hint that this patient is having hypothyroidism you know most common cause of hypothyroidism worldwide it is hashimotos and in hashimotos thyroiditis what's the problem there is mild to moderate enlargement of thyroid there is no well defined goiter mild to moderate enlargement because of that there is increased circumference of neck so obviously what is the diagnosis hashimotos thyroiditis now question for all of you tell me what is the name of auto antibodies which auto antibodies there name of auto antibody jishan you are correct what anti tpo anti tpo and somebody already replied on fnac there is presence of hurdle cells presence of hurdle cells and there is presence of eskanazi presence of hurdle cells presence of eskanazi cells this is leading to hypothyroidism that's why in such patients we give lifelong what we give lifelong levothyroxine lifelong levothyroxine is given <coughs> tell me this one this is the thyroid gland this thyroid gland becomes hard and woody why because there is fibrosis hard and woody because there is fibrosis involving both thyroid as well as parathyroid what is the diagnosis what is the diagnosis yes ankit gurjar again you are correct jishan khan again you are correct it is regional thyroiditis all of you are correct what is the name this is regional thyroiditis and you know what is the other name of regional thyroiditis this is also known as invasive invasive fibrous thyroiditis so this is invasive fibrous thyroiditis here both thyroid as well as parathyroid are replaced by fibrous tissue that's why it leads to hypothyroidism as well as permanent hypoparathyroidism hypothyroidism as well as hypoparathyroidism so lifelong we give levothyroxine lifelong we give calcium and vitamin d supplementation clear guys regional thyroiditis here fnac cannot make the diagnosis now can you tell me what are the three limitations of fnac in thyroid swelling in solitary thyroid nodule what are the three limitations of fnac one i told you regional thyroiditis tell me other two one i told you regional thyroiditis what are the other two tell me guys <clears throat> yes very good rajiv jain follicular adenoma versus follicular carcinoma it cannot differentiate follicular adenoma from follicular carcinoma why because diagnosis of follicular carcinoma it is based on vascular invasion or capsular invasion very good tell me the third one third one third that is thyroid lymphoma so it cannot differentiate follicular follicular adenoma from carcinoma and third is thyroid lymphoma you know anywhere in the body if lymphoma is there for the diagnosis you need what biopsy why because you have to put lots of markers that's why you need sufficient chunk of tissue so these are three limitations of fnac three limitations very good deshra chaudhary kamta prasad very good tell me what is this you can see this kind of swelling in the lips in the tongue what is the name lips and tongue it is having this kind of swelling in the mucosa there is palpable nodules these are mucosal neuromas these are mucosal neuromas can you tell me 
in which multiple endocrine neoplasia there is mucosal neuroma main 1 main 2 main 3 main 1 main 2 a 2 b which one mucosal neuromas are seen in which one dr aru yes aru majority of you are correct main 2 b or main 3 main 2 b or main 3 are having mucosal neuroma so what are the components of mucosal what are the components of main 3 or main 2 b so you can see two basic things what these patients are having medullary thyroid carcinoma and pheochromocytoma clear apart from that there is mucosal neuroma megacolon marfanoid features and patients are having intestinal ganglioneuroma intestinal ganglioneuroma so how to remember mp had mp had 3 mis okay medullary carcinoma thyroid pheochromocytoma 3m mucosal neuroma megacolon marfanoid features and i intestinal ganglioneuroma clear very good all of you are correct guys now tell me this one first tell me what is the name of this sign <coughs> this child is having orbital proptosis and periorbital ecchymosis orbital raccoon very good shambhavi very good shambhavi there is orbital metastasis leading to can you see periorbital ecchymosis and there is proptosis this is known as raccoon eyes now tell me what is the name of this sign 2 and 3 image number 2 image number 3 what is the name of this sign <coughs> yes lena susan lena susan chandni keswani very good guys this is blueberry muffin lesions and all of these are seen in neuroblastoma neuroblastoma so in neuroblastoma you can see there is orbital metastasis there is orbital metastasis and there is cutaneous metastasis <coughs> orbital metastasis and cutaneous metastasis so this orbital metastasis ecchymosis proptosis known as raccoon eyes and this cutaneous metastasis this is known as blueberry muffin lesions very very important these are blueberry muffin lesions very good now can you tell me this patient is having parathyroid adenoma what is the most accurate and most commonly used technique for localization waiting for your reply the patients who are having parathyroid adenoma most accurate and most widely used method for localization appu hariharan shambhavi shambhavi you are correct most of the times and most of the times were the first person to reply very good shandil lena pranav rajiv jain this is sista mebi scan so it is technetium 99 sista mebi scan technetium 99 sista mebi scan this is the most commonly used most accurate for localization of parathyroid adenoma parathyroid adenoma very good guys <coughs> now tell me this ankovi sauce appearance can you see there is aspiration of something from the liver having chocolate brown or reddish brown appearance looking like ankovi sauce Enkavi sauce, it is seen in which type of liver abscess? Which type? Yes, Somi Maria baby C. Arjun. Somi Maria baby C. Arjun, you are correct. It is seen in amoebic liver abscess. Which one? It is seen in <coughs> amoebic liver abscess. And all of you know that this amoebic liver abscess it is caused by ent amoeba histolytica. This ent amoeba histolytica causes histolysis of hepatocytes necrosis of wbc's because of that there is reddish brown or chocolate brown fluid collected majority of cases aspiration is not required what is the drug of choice tell me guys we just give medical management in majority of cases what is the drug of choice drug of choice and dose you have to tell me guys tell me drug of choice and dose drug of choice and the dose metronidazole how much is the dose 
मृणाल मृणाल जिशान डोज सेवन फिफ्टी एम जी टी डी एस सो इट इज़ मेट्रोनिराजोल वी गिव सेवन फिफ्टी एम जी टी डी एस फॉर टेन टू फोर्टीन डेज इट्स गिवन फॉर टेन टू फोर्टीन डेज क्लियर गाइज नेक्स्ट कैन यू टेल मी द डायग्नोसिस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दीज थ्री इमेजेस वेटिंग फॉर योर रिप्लाई दिस इज ग्रास सी टी अल्ट्रासाउंड डायग्नोसिस अप्पू हरिहरन सुशील हरिका आनंद लीना सूजन ऑल ऑफ यू आर करेक्ट यू कैन सी हियर देर आर प्रेजेंस ऑफ मल्टीपल सिस्ट इन द लिवर वेन अल्ट्रासाउंड इज दन यू कैन सी हियर सिस्ट विद इन सिस्ट अपियरेंस दिस कैरेक्टरिस्टिक अपियरेंस इट इज नोन एज रोजेट अपियरेंस ऑन अल्ट्रासाउंड देर इज सिस्ट विद इन सिस्ट अपियरेंस दैट इज नोन एज रोजेट अपियरेंस here on the ct you can see that presence of multiple cyst in the liver multiple cyst in the liver there is characteristic appearance on characteristic appearance on ct can you tell me what is the name of this sign on ct there is characteristic appearance can you tell me guys what is the name of this sign on ct name of this sign on ct tell me characteristic appearance on ct what is the name not this one i'm not asking one i'm asking two ct 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 everybody is marking correctly this is water lily you are correct all of you are correct guys this is water lily sign uh, floating membrane undulating membrane water lily water snake i'm asking this one all of you are correct calcified very very good what kind of calcification yes ring sign what a kind of calcification lena you are very correct you are very close ring like calcification chandni you are correct this is ring like so there are three image based questions let me tell you on ultrasound cyst within cyst appearance that is rosette appearance on ct there is ring like calcification that is characteristic and all of you know this is an image based question water lily sign or water snake sign water lily or water snake sign clear guys now tell me what is the name of this tumor special feature of this tumor you can see the tumor is having central steelhead scar arising from liver so tumor is having this kind of central steelhead scar arising from the liver yes what is the name of this sign this tumor is having a central feeding arteriole with multiple peripheral branches on angiography this sign is seen what is the name of this sign yes yes shivangi shivangi priyanka very good all of you are correct guys this is fnh this is focal nodular hypoplasia and focal nodular hypoplasia it is having central steelhead scar this is having central steelhead scar focal nodular hyperplasia and if you perform angiography there is cartwheel or spoke wheel appearance what's the name this is cartwheel or spoke wheel appearance cartwheel or spoke wheel appearance Clear? Can you tell me, guys? There are four tumors in surgery which are having central steelhead scar. One is FNH. Tell me three more. One is FNH. Second is fibrolamellar variant of HCC. Fibrolamellar variant of HCC. Can you tell me two more? Two more. Serous cyst adenoma pancreas. Jushu noob. Jushu noob. Rajiv Jain. third is serous cyst adenoma pancreas serous cyst adenoma pancreas and fourth renal oncocytoma this is frequently asked question clear i am repeating focal nodular hypoplasia fibrolamellar variant of hcc serous cyst adenoma pancreas and renal oncocytoma these are the four tumors which are having central steelhead scar now tell me guys what is the diagnosis here <coughs> if you see the arterial phase on arterial phase there is arterial phase there is hypervascularization and if you see the venous phase there is wash out of contrast arterial hypervascularization with venous wash out can you tell me what's the diagnosis 
यस मधुसूदन ओझा प्रियंका अंकित गुर्जर किशोर कुमार शांभवी लीना जिशान लैला कल्याण सिंह ऑल ऑफ योर करेक्ट दिस इज द डायग्नोस्टिक क्राइटेरिया फॉर एच सी यू नो डायग्नोस्टिक क्राइटेरिया फॉर एच सी वॉट ऑन ट्रिपल फेस सी टी ऑन ट्रिपल फेस सी टी वॉट इज द फाइंडिंग देर इज आर्टीरियल हाइपर वेस्कुलराइजेशन विथ वीनस वॉश आउट आर्टीरियल हाइपर वेस्कुलराइजेशन विथ वीनस वॉश आउट सो दिस इज एच सी सी क्लियर गाइज टेल मी दिस इज द अल्ट्रासाउंड ऑफ लिवर यू कैन सी हियर दिस काइंड ऑफ लीजन देर इज पोस्टीरियर अकॉस्टिक इन्हेंसमेंट इट इज शोविंग पोस्टीरियर अकॉस्टिक इन्हेंसमेंट इन्हेंसमेंट वॉट्स द डायग्नोसिस इन द लिवर अल्ट्रासाउंड इज डन देर इज पोस्टीरियर अकॉस्टिक इन्हेंसमेंट वॉट इज द डायग्नोसिस येस नो 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 गाइज इन अल इन गॉल स्टोन देर इज पोस्टीरियर कॉस्टिक शेडो पोस्टीरियर कॉस्टिक शेडो इज देयर शेडोइंग इज देयर इन गॉल स्टोन दिस इज पोस्टीरियर कॉस्टिक इन्हेंसमेंट इन्हेंसमेंट लेट मी सी हुज गोइंग टू रिप्लाई फर्स्ट फर्स्ट पर्सन टू रिप्लाई करेक्टली इट इज शी शिवांगी शिवांगी एंड आफ्टर दैट मृणाल जुशनूब आफ्टर दैट वेरी गुड लॉर्ड्स ऑफ यू सो वॉट दिस इज सिंपल हिपैटिक सिस्ट डायग्नोसिस it is simple hepatic cyst simple hepatic cyst it is having clear fluid that's why there is posterior acoustic enhancement in the gall bladder there is a stone and when stone is there there is posterior acoustic shadow clear guys now there are two shunts tell me this is one this is two which one is non selective shunt first tell me the name what is the name of one this is proximal spleno renal shunt or distal spleno renal shunt tell me guys this is proximal spleno renal shunt or distal spleno renal shunt proximal or distal spleno renal shunt one i'm talking about talking about one one is proximal spleno renal shunt psrs or dsrs proximal spleno renal shunt or dsrs distal spleno renal shunt yes okay first person madhusudan ojha sushil pal all of you are correct see you can see this is splenic vein this is the splenic vein the part which is close to hilum that is proximal away from hilum distal so you are going to cut this part perform splenectomy and after that what you do you are going to attach this proximal part of splenic vein to renal vein in the second image you can see this is the splenic vein this is the distal part and i'm going to attach this distal part to the renal vein so this is distal spleno renal shunt so first is proximal spleno renal shunt second is distal spleno renal shunt first one it is non selective why it is non selective shunt because you can see almost whole blood from the portal vein goes into ivc and here it is selective shunt why because the vein vein the blood of only spleen goes to the ivc so dsrs this is selective shunt and you know psrs that is non selective shunt clear guys image based question these are frequently asked image based questions now can you tell me what is the diagnosis <clears throat> tell me the diagnosis guys here yes this is an alcoholic patient first you tell me what is the name of this appearance near umbilicus near umbilicus shambhavi tell me all of you are correct this is a case of portal hypertension very good near umbilicus what is this umbilicus yes there are varices caput caput very good appu hariharan caput caput medusae this is known as what very good guys caput medusae this is caput medusae and you know whenever we put our stethoscope or caput medusae we can hear one murmur and what is the name you must guy must be knowing it is known as cruel hire cruel hire bomb garten murmur so this is known as cruel hire bomb garten murmur here you can see on endoscopy there are multiple varices multiple varices so this is a case of portal hypertension okay 
tell me what is the definition of portal hypertension how much is the pressure pressure should be more than 10 mmhg and whenever there is portal hypertension there are two universal manifestations one esophageal varices and the second splenomegaly so universal manifestations are esophageal varices and splenomegaly clear guys very very important now see this you are correct <coughs> see this tell me the name of this tube what's the name of this tube used in the patients of varicell bleeding name of this tube this is Seng's taken Blakemore tube all of you are correct SB tube this is Seng's taken Blakemore tube Seng's taken Blakemore tube Blakemore tube clear and you know this is how many balloons are there in this tube there are two balloons one two and how many lumens are there three so this is double balloon triple lumen tube this is double balloon triple lumen tube this is used to control bleeding during transportation used to control bleeding from esophageal varices during transportation clear guys Seng's taken Blakemore tube right now see all these pictures and tell me this is the most common congenital anomaly of gallbladder what's the name most common congenital anomaly of gallbladder tell me what is the name guys tell me what's the name no no it is not murphy sign yes mrinal very good sweta mahendran very good priyanka shipra all of you are correct this is phrygian cap can you see what's the name there is phrygian cap the name is this is the most common congenital anomaly of gallbladder phrygian cap you can see here there is infolding of septum between fundus and body so between fundus and body there is infolding of septum gallbladder is not having any kind of abnormality only this is the anatomical abnormality there is no other problem associated that's why we don't go for cholecystectomy this is phrygian cap phrygian cap next tell me what is the name of this gallstone yellow colored gallstone which one yellow colored gallstone what's the name guys yellow colored this is obviously yes shivangi correct correct shivangi all of you are correct this is cholesterol why because lipid imparts yellow color very good vrushali rajiv jain sushil pal deepti priya rajnandini jamal laila Lena, sujan mithu all of you are correct cholesterol and obviously this is black so this is black stone and this one is brown this is brown stone now can you tell me guys black and brown these are known as pigmented stones pigmented stones so question worldwide what is the most common type of gallstone most common type of gallstone worldwide worldwide most common type of gallstone <coughs> yes it is cholesterol very good cholesterol gallstone very good who said mixed let me see somebody Hemant Hemant Ashish Nayak very good most common type of gallstone cholesterol if mixed is given choose mixed mixed why because 95 percent component will be cholesterol 2 to 3 percent component will be black and brown so most common type of gallstone worldwide cholesterol mixed if given in the option and if you are talking about asia or india in asia or india most common type of gallstone it's pigmented that is pigmented okay now tell me guys what is the name of this sign name of this sign tell me guys in gallstone what is the name of this sign yes what is the name of this sign just a doctor sahu mercedes mercedes very good your dream car sign you can see in the stone what happens there is tri radiate fissure so it's a tri radiate fissure you can see here there is tri radiate fissure tri radiate fissure so what this is Mercedes Benz sign and whenever there is bi radiate fissure this is known as seagull sign so this is Mercedes Benz Mercedes Benz sign if there is tri radiate fissure and there is seagull sign seagull sign if there is bi radiate fissure seagull sign clear this is seen in 
gallstones. Okay. Now you tell me out of these two images, tell me the diagnosis. This is ultrasound, one, two. In those, in both of these images, there is gallbladder pathology. Tell me guys, what is the problem in first one? First one, <coughs> G2, yes, dark night, very good. First is stone, second is polyp. First is stone, second is polyp, very good. You can see here, this is the stone, clear? And you can see the posterior caustic shadowing. There is the stone and you can see posterior caustic shadowing shadowing but if there is a polyp if polyp is there there is no shadowing so how to differentiate stone from polyp on ultrasound if stone is there there is posterior caustic shadowing you can see the shadow here if the polyp is there there is no shadowing very good now tell me guys what is the name of this investigation tell me the name of this investigation <coughs> kishore kumar tell me what is the name of this investigation? Hida, Appu Hariharan, Rajiv, all of you are correct. Hida, and you know what is the full form? Hepatobiliary Immuno Diacetic Acid Scan. You can see this is normal Hida scan. Why? Because here you can notice that there is uptake tracer is there in the gallbladder. It is seen in the CBD and it is seen in the small intestine. Presence of tracer. But in the second, you can see there is non-visualization of gallbladder. Can you tell me what is the diagnosis? Since there is non-filling of gallbladder or non-visualization of gallbladder, what is the diagnosis? Vinita, it is not hydrated. Non-visualization of gallbladder, very good. Nisar, Dar, very good. Shambhavi, all of you are correct. What? It is acute cholecystitis. This was a question. So there is non-visualization of gallbladder non-filling of gallbladder here this is acute cholecystitis so this patient is having acute cholecystitis acute cholecystitis very good guys now see this was image based question asked many times in INICT and need pg this is ultrasound can you tell me what is the diagnosis what is the name of this sign first tell me name of this sign what is the name of this sign Comet tail, Shivangi, you are correct. Comet tail, Appu Hariharan, you are correct. Adenomyometosis, comet tail, comet tail, diamond ring sign, very good. So, what's the name? This is known as diamond ring sign. This is diamond ring sign, also known as comet tail artifacts. This is also known as comet tail artifacts, also known as V shaped artifacts, V-shaped artifacts and you can see this is the comet tail artifacts, V-shaped artifacts or diamond ring sign and all of you are correct, it is seen in adenomyometosis. Guys, it is seen in adenomyometosis, very good guys, all of you are correct, adenomyometosis, very nice. Next, tell me what is the name of this condition? First see the x-ray, on x-ray you can see there is air fluid levels and can you see there is presence of gas within the gallbladder wall. Here also you can see air fluid level and presence of ring of air, gas around gallbladder wall. Gas, 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 very good, very good, Ankit Gurjar, Ashish Nayak, Madhusudan Ojha, all of you are correct, gas means emphysema. So, this is emphysematous cholecystitis, very good. Now, tell me the organism responsible. This is emphysematous cholecystitis. <coughs> What's the name? This is emphysematous cholecystitis. Clear? Tell me guys, what is the organism responsible? Arjun, very good Arjun, very good. Very good Rahul, very good. Very good. It is Clostridium velchai or Clostridium perfringens. It is caused by Clostridium velchai, Clostridium velchai, also known as Clostridium perfringens. Perfringens followed by E. coli. 
followed by E. coli. This is emphysematous cholecystitis. that is emphysema means presence of air. So, there will be ring of air around the gallbladder, there will be presence of gas within the gallbladder wall. Very good guys. Next, tell me what is the name of this condition? Name of this condition, yes, you must be knowing, you can see here, what? You can see the strawberry, you can see the gallbladder. So, this is what? Strawberry gallbladder. All of you are correct. Strawberry gallbladder and you know the, that what is the other name? This is also known as cholesterolosis. Cholesterolosis. You know it is benign condition caused by deposition of, you can see here, cholesterol. What? Easter. Deposition of cholesterol, ester and triglycerides in epithelial macrophages, everything is related to cholesterol in, gall in strawberry gallbladder. What? There is cholesterol polyp, these patients are having cholesterol polyp, these patients are having cholesterol gallstone, cholesterol gallstone and obviously it is an acquired condition where patient is having what? Hypercholesterolemia. So, there is increased cholesterol level. This is benign. The patient is having, this is acquired. There is cholesterol polyp, cholesterol gallstone, hypercholesterolemia. Very good. Can you tell me what is the diagnosis here? Ultrasound is also given and gross image is also given. Ultrasound as well as gross image, all of these are given. Tell me guys. Ultrasound, very good. Priya Rajnandini, Appu Hariharan, Sushil Pal. This was asked in NEET PG. This is a gallbladder polyp. And here you can see presence of a polyp. There is no posterior caustic shadowing. So, this is gallbladder polyp. Very good, guys. This is very, very important question. Tell me what is the diagnosis. <clears throat> on X ray, you can see this structure. And on CT, you can see this structure. What is the diagnosis? Waiting for your reply. Diagnosis. Yes. Arun, tell me, Ashish Nayak first person, first person, Ankit Gurdjieff second person, Arun Sharma third, Dr. Knight fourth, all of you are correct. This is porcelain gallbladder. What is the diagnosis here? This is porcelain, porcelain gallbladder, also known as calcified gallbladder, calcified gallbladder. Though patient is asymptomatic, but it is detected incidentally on X-ray or CT. What is the problem? There is 6 percent risk of increased risk of invasive cancer. So, increased risk of malignancy, which one? Carcinoma gallbladder, 6 percent and that is why we go for early lab cholecystectomy. Early lab cholecystectomy is done. Tell me guys on this CT, what is this sign? You can see here, there is a center and there is a dot. There is a dot in the center dot in the center, dot in the center, dot in the center. Tell me what is the name of this sign? Yes, Ankit, Madhusudan, Ojha, tell me. Kishore, what is the sign? Ankit, this one, this one. There is dot in the center, dot in the center. No, 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 Shivangi, it is not target sign. Tell me, Caroli is very good, very good. Dr. Aru, you got it. It is central dot sign seen in Caroli's disease, central dot sign. This is central, <coughs> central dot sign. It is seen in Caroli's disease. And can you tell me guys, Caroli's disease is what type of cholidocal cyst? Kishore, correct, you are, you are correct Kishore Kumar. Caroli's disease is which type of? Which type of cholidocal cyst? Yes, Arun, we go for liver transplantation type 5, Dr. Knight, Dark Knight, Ashish Nayak, Caroli's disease. It is type 5 cholidocal cyst in which multiple cysts are there involving intrahepatic bile duct. And since intrahepatic bile duct is involved, you cannot repair intrahepatic bile duct. So, here, what is the treatment of choice? It is liver transplantation. Correct, guys, all of you are correct. Now, you can see what is the diagnosis here. This is primary sclerosing cholangitis. Can you tell me in primary sclerosing cholangitis there is only involvement of intrahepatic bile duct or extrahepatic bile duct or there is involvement of both intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile duct? Tell me. 
ओनली इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ इंट्रा हेपैटिक बाइलडक्ट एक्स्ट्रा हेपैटिक बाइलडक्ट और बोथ बोथ अपू हरिहरन बोथ सो यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज लिवर शेडो इन दिस लिवर शेडो शेडो यू कैन सी मल्टीपल स्ट्रिक्चर डायलिटेशन मीन्स इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ इंट्रा हेपैटिक बाइलडक्ट यू कैन सी दिस इज द एक्स्ट्रा हेपैटिक बाइलडक्ट दिस इज द पैनक्रेटिक डक्ट सो इन एक्स्ट्रा हेपैटिक बाइलडक्ट ऑल्सो वॉट हैपन्स देर आर मल्टीपल स्ट्रिक्चर्स एंड डायलिटेशन दिस इज एम आर सी पी एंड हियर सिंस यू सी द प्रेजेंस ऑफ इंडोस्कोप इंडोस्कोप इज देयर सो दिस इज ई आर सी पी सेम फाइंडिंग मल्टीपल स्ट्रिक्चर्स एंड डायलिटेशन सो दिस इज प्राइमरी स्क्लीरोजिंग कोलेंजाइटिस वेरी गुड प्राइमरी स्क्लीरोजिंग कोलेंजाइटिस शिप्रा यू आर करेक्ट भरत गाइज सी दिस ई आर सी पी टेल मी द डायग्नोसिस सी द ई आर सी पी एंड टेल मी द डायग्नोसिस टेल मी वॉट इज द डायग्नोसिस हियर टेल मी गाइज सी द ई आर सी पी एंड टेल मी द डायग्नोसिस हियर Yes. Very good, guys. This is CBD stone. Very good. So what you can see, there are multiple CBD stones, multiple stones in the CBD. Not only in the CBD, in the cystic duct also stones are there. So this is ERCP showing multiple stones in the CBD. Can you tell me which one is better for diagnosis? Miss investigation of choice for CBD stone that is ERCP or MRCP. Tell me. Investigation of choice for diagnosis that is ERCP or MRCP. Tell me, guys. Arun Sharma, Sushil Pal. Sushil Pal is the first person to reply. What it is MRCP? MRCP is having better sensitivity. You know, ERCP is gold standard. Here you can see, this is ERCP. Since ERCP, it is both diagnostic and therapeutic. You know that this is gold standard. gold standard but if you see the quality of image what it's better in mrcp so mrcp is having better sensitivity so mrcp this is the investigation of choice clear guys so two questions for cbd stone what is the investigation of choice that is mrcp and what is the gold standard investigation ercp why because this diagnostic and you can remove the stone also Now see this one. Tell me in which condition these signs are seen. Waiting for your reply. In which conditions these signs are seen? Apu Hariharan, you are correct. Pancreatitis. What kind of pancreatitis? Hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Very good. Whenever there is retroperitoneal hemorrhage, there is bleeding along facial planes. Because of that. There is a chymosis around umbilicus, and a chymosis around umbilicus. This is known as Cullen sign. A chymosis around flank. Whenever there is a chymosis around flank, this is Gray Turner sign. And whenever there is a chymosis around inguinal region, there is a chymosis around inguinal region that is known as Fox sign. A chymosis around inguinal region that is known as Fox sign. Clear? So, Cullen sign, Gray Turner sign, Fox sign. These are seen in patients of acute pancreatitis when there is retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Clear, guys? See this one. This is sentinel loop. In acute pancreatitis, what happens? There is localized ileus involving jejunum. So, whenever there is localized ileus involving jejunum, this is known as sentinel loop. What's the name? Sentinel loop. Clear? Now you can see this one. Tell me the name of this sign. This is transverse colon. This is stomach. What is the name of this sign? Again, seen in acute pancreatitis. Jamal, first person to reply. Jamal is the first person. This is colon cutoff sign. Rajiv, Shubham, Shivangi, all of you are correct. So see, you cannot visualize colon beyond the splenic flexure of colon. So what? Colon is cut off. Again, it is because of localized ileus. So, two questions: localized ileus in which jejunum is affected. There is sentinel loop, and if colon is not visualized below beyond splenic flexure of colon, this is what this is known as colon cutoff sign. Clear, guys? Tell me the diagnosis here. Frequently asked question, guys. Tell me. Again, it was seen after four to six weeks of acute pancreatitis. 
this CT was done, what is the diagnosis? Kavya, very good Kavya, first person to reply. Kavya, Ankit Gujar, yes, it is pseudocyst. Here you can see, guys, this is pseudocyst. This is the pseudocyst, and you can see this structure which is having air. This is stomach. So, this is the pseudocyst, and it is compressing the stomach. Clear? So, what is the diagnosis here? This is pseudocyst, pseudocyst of pancreas. Okay? Next, tell me the diagnosis based on this X ray and CT. This was asked in the latest exam. On the basis of this X-ray and on the basis of this CT, tell me the diagnosis. <coughs> Guys, tell me. Sushil Pal, why you are just writing angiomyelipoma everywhere? <coughs> Lena Sujan. Yes, very good guys. Madhu Sudan, very good Madhu Sudan. Ankit Kumar, Shahu, Jamal, very good. What you can see guys here on x-ray, there is presence of calcification as well as in stone. And on the CT, you can see what calcification. So, pancreatic calcification, it is seen in chronic pancreatitis. Pancreatic calcification, it is seen in chronic pancreatitis. Clear guys? And in what percentage of chronic pancreatitis, it is seen in 20 to 40 percent. It is seen in 20 to 40 percent patients of chronic pancreatitis. So, this is calcified pancreas, pancreatic calcification. Next, you can see I am performing ERCP and if you see this ERCP, you can notice what? There is chain of flakes, pancreatic duct is dilated, chain of flakes also known as string of pearls appearance. So, this is known as chain of flakes, chain of flakes also known as string of pearls appearance, string of pearls, string of pearls appearance. So, chain of legs, string of pearls appearance, very good. Again seen in chronic pancreatitis, again it is seen in chronic pancreatitis, very good guys. Now here, tell me what is the diagnosis? This is also ERCP. In this ERCP, you can see this is the pancreatic duct which is having stricture, this is having dilatation stricture dilatation. Tell me, what is the diagnosis? Pancreatic duct is having multiple stricture dilatation, stricture dilatation. What is the diagnosis? Very good. <clears throat> this is known as beaded appearance, also known as string of pearls or chain of flakes appearance. This is also known as beaded appearance, string of pearls appearance or chain of flakes appearance. And again, it is seen in chronic pancreatitis, chronic pancreatitis, clear? Now, guys, tell me this one. <coughs> what is the name of this sign? On barium study, you can see what? This is the, which part of stomach? Antrum. This is antrum of stomach. I have given the hint also to all of you. What is the name of sign? Very good. Rahul Prajapat. This is seen in head of pancreas, carcinoma head of pancreas. No, no, no. Arun, it is not reverse 3. One, once you, uh, yes, Ankit Gujar, Dr. Aru, very good. This is antral pad sign. Can you see here? This is antrum, near antrum. What is the problem? You can see this is the mass in the pancreas head. So, what happens? It is causing indentation at the antrum. This is known as what? Antral pad sign. What is the name? Antral pad sign. Very good. Now, tell me this one, what is the name of this sign? Yes, it is seen in carcinoma, head of pancreas. What is the name of this sign? Tell me guys. Name of this sign? Yes, Kavya, you are correct, Mrinal. Now, everybody can see their reverse 3. So, what you can see guys? You can see that this is reverse 3. Why? Because malignancy is here. So inflammatory changes are marked in the medial wall. That is why this lateral wall is not visualized. Lateral wall is not visualized properly. In the medial wall, inflammatory changes are there. This is known as reverse 3 sign of Frostberg. What is the name? Known as reverse 3 sign of 
frost bug <coughs> reverse 3 sign of frost bug clear and again it is seen in carcinoma head of pancreas next see this one and tell me what's the name <coughs> what's the name guys tell me <coughs> yes Ankit Gujar Vidushi Vidushi very good Ankit most of the times you are correct this is double duct sign what you can see this is one duct pancreatic duct this is bile duct both of these ducts are not appear to join actually what happens both of these ducts are going to join together but when the mass is there you perform ERCP the contrast is not coming back into duodenum so you can see two separate ducts so I'm telling you these three signs what patient who is having antral pad sign reverse three sign of frost bug and this double duct sign double duct sign all these are seen in carcinoma head of pancreas <clears throat> in which malignancy it is seen it is seen in carcinoma head so get these this thing into your head what that these signs are seen in carcinoma head of pancreas clear guys very very important now tell me what is the name of this triangle it is seen in which tumor what is the name of this triangle it is seen in which tumor waiting for a reply Ankit Passaro, triangle of Passaro, also known as gastrinoma triangle. So, this is known as triangle of Passaro, also known as gastrinoma triangle. And you know, 90% of gastrinomas are located in this triangle. Junction, cystic duct CBD junction. Here you can see body and neck of pancreas, junction of second and third part of duodenum. So, cystic duct CBD junction, body and neck of pancreas, second and third part of duodenum. This is gastrinoma triangle. 90% of gastrinomas are seen in this triangle. You know, this was the image based question in NEET PG. Clear, guys? Next, tell me in which neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas this sign is seen? This sign is seen in which type of neuroendocrine tumor of pancreas? Shambhavi. Very good. Very good, Shambhavi. Sushil. Arun Sharma, Swetha, Mahendran, Madhusudan, Ankit Gujar, Shruti, all of you are correct. This is glucagonoma. Guys, all of you are correct. This is glucagonoma. And you know, in glucagonoma, there are four Ds. What are those four Ds? Diabetes, dermatitis, DVT depression. Four Ds. Diabetes mellitus, DVT. There is dermatitis. And there is depression. Clear? What is the most common symptom? The most common symptom is dermatitis. There is special type of dermatitis and what is the name? This is known as NEM. What is the full form? This is known as necrolytic, necrolytic erythema migrans. This is known as necrolytic erythema migrans. Clear? This is the most common symptom. You will not hear this symptom again. So, this is necrolytic erythema migrans. It is seen in glucagonoma. That is 4D syndrome. Clear? Now, tell me guys. In one, there are small, small microcyst. And the second one, macrocyst. These are the tumors of pancreas. Tell me which one is serous cyst adenoma and which one is mucinous cyst adenoma. This is one. This is two. Which one is serous cyst adenoma? Which one is mucinous cyst adenoma? Guys, tell me. Yes, very good. One is serous cyst adenoma because it is microcystic, having honeycomb appearance or there is sponge like appearance. This one you can see the mucinous collection is there. This one is macrocystic. So, ma major difference serous cyst adenoma, this is microcystic. Mucinous cyst adenoma that is macrocystic. Clear? This is the major difference. Serous cyst adenoma and mucinous cyst adenoma. Now, this is the question which is asked. You told me that in serous cyst adenoma pancreas, again, what this kind of scar is seen. So, can you see the scar over here? What is the name of this sign on CT? Guys, tell me. I am waiting for your reply. What is the name of this sign on CT? Name of this sign on CT. 
सेंट्रल स्टीलेट स्कार ऑल्सो नोन एज सेंट्रल सनबर्स्ट कैल्सिफिकेशन सो दिस इज सीरियस सिस्ट एडिनोमा ऑफ पैनक्रियाज देर इज सेंट्रल स्टीलेट स्कार दीज पेशेंट्स हैव सेंट्रल स्टीलेट स्कार और दीज पेशेंट्स हैव सेंट्रल सन बर्स्ट कैल्सिफिकेशन द पेशेंट्स आर हैविंग सेंट्रल सन बर्स्ट कैल्सिफिकेशन सेंट्रल स्टीलेट स्कार सेंट्रल सनबर्स्ट कैल्सिफिकेशन इन सीरियस सिस्टेडिनोमा क्लियर गाइस दिस क्वेश्चन इज फेमस नाउ वट इज क्वाइन इन ट्रेकिया और क्वाइन इन इसोफेगस क्लियर सो वेन क्वाइन गोज इन ट्रेकिया इफ यू गो फॉर पी ए व्यू वॉट यू कैन सी यू कैन सी द एज एंड इफ यू सी द लैटरल व्यू ऑन द लैटरल व्यू यू कैन सी द फ्लैट सर्फेस बट वेन इट गोज इन टू इसोफेगस यू कैन सी ऑन पी ए व्यू ऑन पी ए व्यू you can see the flat surface but on lateral view you can see the edge on the lateral view you can see the edge second you can differentiate it on the basis of symptoms if it is in trachea patient will be having dyspnea and if it is in esophagus patient will be having dysphagia clear now this was the picture in neat pg fmg and inct tell me where is the coin where is the coin guy in esophagus or in trachea tell me see the image where is the coin kishor kumar appu dishan shivangi shipra kavya all of you are correct you can see here that on flat surf on pa view you can see the flat surface of coin on lateral view you can see the edge and you can see here there is presence of air in this organ what is this organ this is trachea you know that trachea is located anterior to esophagus so first on the basis of symptom there will be dysphagia and here on pa view there is flat surface on lateral view you can see the edge so this is in esophagus coin is in the esophagus tell me the diagnosis on the basis of these two images what is the diagnosis guys tell me on the basis of these two images what is the diagnosis Kavya, very good. Sushil Pal, very good. You can see in the left hemithorax there is presence of multiple bowel loops. Means here, what is the content? Small intestine, and here Ryle's tube is inserted, and you can see coiling of Ryle's tube in stomach, which is located in thorax. So here the content is stomach. So in both of these, what is the diagnosis? Congenital diaphragmatic hernia. In the first one, content is small intestine. and in the second one what is the content content is stomach so this is congenital diaphragmatic hernia guys see this one tell me the diagnosis this is barium swallow okay barium study what you can see here you can see there is herniation of fundus in the thorax and this fundus is compressing the esophagus tell me which type of hernia so fundus is herniating by side of esophagus so obviously what kind of hernia yes this is para esophageal hernia so this is para esophageal hernia because there is herniation of fundus by side of esophagus so this is para esophageal hernia clear guys next tell me the diagnosis here simplest question every year this question is asked tell me the diagnosis simplest question <coughs> you can see what What is the name of this diverticulum? Yes, all of you are correct. Very good, Rahul. All of everybody: Jamal, Kevin, Brinal, Rajiv Jain, Dev Datta, Ashish, Arjun Nayak, Aditya, Shivangi, Towns, Tosif, Yusuf. All of you are correct. This is Zenkers diverticulum. You know Zenkers diverticulum is false because it contains only mucosa and submucosa. Herniation via Killian triangle. Here you can see. And Zenkers diverticulum, it is compressing what? Compressing the esophagus. That's why most common symptom is what? Dysphagia. the most common complication you know that there is lung abscess and it is going to increase the risk of which malignancy yes guys squamous cell carcinoma this is zenkers diverticulum right tell me easiest question you can see the sign also this is bird beak this is rat tail you can see here bird beak pencil tip rat tail appearance seen in achalasia cardia bird beak rat tail pencil tip appearance 
पेंसिल टिप अपियरेंस येस एवरीबडी इज करेक्ट डॉक्टर भारत अंकित गुर्जर अरु जमाल ऑल ऑफ यू आर करेक्ट वेरी गुड गाइज वेरी नाइस दिस इज अक्लेजिया कार्डिया कैन यू टेल मी वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ द साइन अगेन इट इज सीन इन एक्लेजिया कार्डिया कैन यू टेल मी द नेम ऑफ द साइन दिस इज वेरियम स्वालो वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ द साइन गाइज This is seen in Ecclesia cardia. What is the name of this sign? You can see how esophagus looks like. It is dilated, tortuous. It is dilated, tortuous. It loses its tone and motility. This is known as yes, sigmoid esophagus. Sigmoid esophagus, also known as mega esophagus. So sigmoid esophagus. This is also known as mega esophagus. When Esophagus loses its tone motility, becomes dilated. Sigmoid esophagus, mega esophagus, seen in Ecclesia cardia. Chronic cases, and what is the treatment here? We perform esophagectomy. The treatment we perform here, esophagectomy. Clear, guys? Esophagectomy. Next, every year this image-based question is asked. Tell me the name of sign. Every year. <clears throat> yes, all of you are correct, guys. For previous question, diffuse esophageal spasm. Very good. What is the name of this sign? Corkscrew esophagus. Who is this guy? Shubham Gupta. Angiodysplasia. Why you are marking angiodysplasia? See, diffuse esophageal spasm. This is known as corkscrew. Corkscrew esophage. Corkscrew appearance or rosary bead appearance. There is corkscrew appearance or corkscrew sign, rosary bead appearance or pseudo diverticular appearance. There is pseudo diverticular appearance. Clear? So all these are the signs which are seen in diffuse esophageal spasm. Every year this question is asked, guys. Tell me, endoscopy is done. This kind of image is seen. Tell me the diagnosis. This kind of image on endoscopy. What is the diagnosis? Frequently asked question. <clears throat> Let me see. <clears throat> yes. No, 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 guys. No, no, no. Yes, Shubham. It's Barrett's. What you can see here? You can see this is the pale mucosa. This is suggestive of squamous epithelium. There is tongue like projection of red velvety mucosa. This red velvety mucosa, this is tongue like projection. And what is the name? This is, yes, this is columnar. So, you know that squamous epithelium is pale. Columnar is having red velvety mucosa. So, there are tongue like projection in esophagus. And this is known as what? Barrett's. All of you are correct. Name of this, it is Barrett's. And you know, guys, in Barrett's esophagus, what kind of metaplasia is there? There is intestinal metaplasia. Intestinal metaplasia. It means what? You all you are going to find goblet cells. So, what is the investigation of choice for diagnosis in Barrett's? If you perform endoscopy, this kind of appearance, red velvety mucosa projection, tongue-like projection, and if you go for biopsy, endoscopy, this kind of appearance, and when we go for biopsy, what kind of cells? There is presence of goblet cells. Why there is presence of goblet cells? Because what kind of metaplasia is there? Yes, intestinal metaplasia. All of you are correct. This is intestinal metaplasia. Very good. <coughs> Tell me, what is the name of this sign? <coughs> it's written, apple core appearance. It is seen in which particular condition? Somebody was waiting for this sign eagerly. It is seen in which condition? Guys, apple core, yes, appu, appu. No, 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 Ankit, very bad. This is barium swallow. In carcinoma colon also you will find apple core appearance, but that is non barium enema. This is barium swallow. Yes, you are correct. This is carcinoma esophagus. So carcinoma esophagus, this is apple core appearance. All of you are correct. Carcinoma esophagus. Tell me what is the name of this sign? What is the name of this condition? Here a patient is having a tumor. Because of this tumor, there is smooth punched out defect on barium swallow, smooth punched out defect. Which tumor is this? <clears throat> Let me see, first person to reply, 
यस अंकित कुमार सुशील शांभवी दीप्ति नारायण यस वेरी गुड ऑल ऑफ योर करेक्ट दिस इज मोस्ट कॉमन बिनाइन ट्यूमर दिस इज द मोस्ट कॉमन बिनाइन ट्यूमर ऑफ इसोफेगस लियोमायोमा इट इज हैविंग स्मूथ पंचड आउट फिलिंग डिफेक्ट देर इज स्मूथ पंचड आउट फिलिंग डिफेक्ट इट इज सीन इन लियोमायोमा स्मूथ पंचड आउट फिलिंग डिफेक्ट टेल मी गाइज देर इज अ सर्कम फेरेंशियल रिंग एट स्क्वामो कॉलमर जंक्शन इट कंटेन्स ओनली म्यूकोजा प्लस सब म्यूकोजा सर्कम फेरेंशियल रिंग एट स्क्वामो कॉलमर जंक्शन वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ दिस अप्पू वेरी गुड अप्पू दिशांत अरुण वेरी गुड शिवांगी ऑल ऑफ यू आर करेक्ट दिस इज शैड्सकी रिंग दिस इज शैड्सकी रिंग clear so there is circumferential ring at squamo columnar junction it contains only mucosa and submucosa sometimes meat particle or solid food is stuck there it leads to episodic aphasia in shadsky ring very good can you tell me what is the name of this condition it's already written what this is mallory v steer or mallory v syndrome in this case there is partial tear involving only mucosa plus submucosa partial tear involving mucosa and submucosa guys can you tell me what is the most common site i'm waiting for your reply lena shivangi shipra all of you are correct shipra it is not bore have <coughs> this is mallory v steer it's already written yes most common site of mallory v steer most common site no 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 tell me guys tell me tell me most common site is easy g junction very good shivangi g junction and sahu vlogs sahu is correct it is cardia what is the most common site it is cardia located just below g junction it is located just below g junction tell me you can see here there is presence of a large arteriole placed just below mucosa just below mucosa there is a large arteriole and can you see there is bleeding bleeding with very high force so what happens it leads to recurrent bleeding and hypotension massive bleeding occurs tell me the name of this condition tell me the name of this condition no 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 this is not gave gave will come this is dilfoys lesion guys what's the name this is dilfoys lesion this is known as dilfoys lesion clear so what happens there is presence of large arteriole just below mucosa it gets injured why because in stomach there is acidic environment it is causing this kind of pulsation so overlying mucosa is necrosed it is exposed to the gastric environment wall is injured and that's why active pulsatile bleeding occurs it leads to active pulsatile bleeding and these patients are having what massive bleeding leading to hypotension okay and see all of you were waiting for this one gave watermelon gave watermelon so what this is gave also known as watermelon stomach can you tell me what is the most common site guys tell me what is the most common site it is written in the gave full form most common site all of you are correct snow cast devadatta panda leena dr aru Shruti Sunil, what is the full form of gave? Gastric antral vascular ectasia. So full form, it is gastric antral vascular ectasia. That's why most common site antrum. And what is the pathology? Patient is having vascular ectasia, means dilated vessels. So what? Whenever you perform endoscopy on endoscopy, there are parallel stripes of blood vessels. It looks like rind or covering of watermelon. so parallel stripes of blood vessels near antrum it looks like rind or covering of watermelon so this is water melon stomach clear guys water melon stomach now tell me what is the name of this condition <clears throat> in the stomach there are finger like projections finger like projections so there are rugies which are having finger like projections there is excessive secretion of protein so there is loss of protein patient will develop hypoproteinemia This is a risk factor for carcinoma stomach. Tell me, let me see who is the first person to reply. Sushil Pal, Sushil, very good, Sushil. This is menetrius disease. 
this is menetrius disease all of you know there is finger like rugies or projections there is secretion of protein loss of protein these patients are having increased risk of carcinoma stomach so it is a pre malignant condition menetrius disease tell me this barium meal what is the name of this appearance this is stomach what is the name of this appearance guys tell me <coughs> very good tgf beta mediated very good alpha beta very good tgf mediated linitis plastica leather bottle appearance leather bottle stomach so this is linitis plastica what's the name this is linitis plastica linitis plastica this is also known as leather bottle stomach leather bottle stomach so this is leather bottle stomach what is the problem in linitis plastica there is excessive fibrosis in submucosa that's why stomach loses the property of distensibility and what is the symptom there is early satiety so these patients are having what early satiety clear guys early satiety next you can see that this patient is having a saddle shaped ulcer at lesser curvature because of this contraction this kind of appearance is seen so what's the name of this kind of appearance our glass stomach so in this case there is ulcer saddle shaped ulcer near lesser curvature because of this saddle shaped ulcer at lesser curvature when contraction is there it is looking like what it is looking like our glass stomach so our glass stomach clear guys this is our glass stomach okay next tell me what is the name of this sign so here you can see the appearance is like mushroom and here it is looking like caterpillar what is this this is actually distended stomach with some amount of food and fluid so it is caterpillar sign this is also known as mushroom sign so caterpillar sign mushroom sign all of these are seen in hypertrophic pyloric stenosis so these are seen in which sign these are seen in which condition yes hypertrophic pyloric stenosis yes very good yusuf shivangi dishant lina shruti kishor all of you are correct all of you are correct now tell me what is the name of this sign you can see the bubbles this is first this is second this is third tell me in first how many bubbles can you see first second third first shivangi very good shivangi very good shivangi very good first 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 is single bubble you can see here guys this is actually stomach and this patient is having what hypertrophic pyloric stenosis that's why here the whole stomach is distended so only single bubble now can you tell me number 2 how many bubbles number 2 yes double bubble very good so single bubble it is seen in hypertrophic pyloric stenosis here this is stomach fundus this is first part of duodenum double bubble and it is seen in duodenal atresia seen in duodenal atresia and which other condition annular pancreas so it is seen in duodenal atresia and annular pancreas guy very good the crowd is so interesting it is so loving yes very good guys very nice yes very good and you can see number 3 this is one bubble this is second this is third so triple bubble and let me see sujata very good sujata triple bubble sign and it is seen in jejunal atresia this is triple bubble it is seen in jejunal atresia very good guys very good this is jejunal atresia very good single bubble double bubble triple bubble frequently asked question it is x ray appearance given now here you can see this is mesenteric cyst and here it is filled with chyle chylus collection and this is arising from bowel so this is enterogenous enterogenous this is chylolymphatic <coughs> having chylus collection so what's the name this is chylolymphatic okay guys and you know what is the most common type it is chylolymphatic which is most common right 
it is having chylus collection. Chylolymphatic cyst, it's having independent vascular supply, there is no shared wall. That's why we go for enucleation. But in enterogenous cyst, there is shared wall and shared vascular supply. That's why we go for resection and anastomosis. So, resection and anastomosis is done in enterogenous cyst. Enucleation, it is sufficient for chylolymphatic cyst. And in, in, in mesenteric cyst, which triad is positive, you know, there is a triad which is positive, that is known as telox triad. The triad which is positive, that is telox triad. Very good. Very good, guys. Can you tell me the diagnosis? This question is asked every year in each and every paper. <coughs> this question is asked every year in each and every paper. Tell me guys, what is the diagnosis here? Diagnosis, perforation, simple you can see what? Free air under the right dome of diaphragm. So, what you can see? Free air under the right dome of diaphragm. This is perforation peritonitis. And whenever there is perforation peritonitis, first what you have to do? Resuscitate the patient. After full resuscitation, we take the patient for laparotomy. Clear? So, first we resuscitate the patient and then we take the patient for laparotomy. Next, tell me, this is <coughs> supine view, supine view and this is upright or erect view upright view. Tell me what is the diagnosis guys? What is the diagnosis? Yes. Very good. Vidushi, Vidushi, correct, snow cast, Murph, Aru, Dr. Knight, Appu, Hariharan, all of you are correct. This is small ball obstruction. Now tell me which part of bowel is this? There is circumferential ring like pattern known as volvuli coniventis. So which part of small bowel is this? Circumferential ring like pattern, valvuli coniventis, which part of bowel? Jejunum, Shambhavi, you are correct. This is jejunum. And here you can see step ladder pattern. So, this is small bowel obstruction. You can see multiple bowel loops placed centrally, narrow in caliber. This is small bowel obstruction. How you differentiate it from large bowel obstruction? You can see bowel loops placed peripherally. You can see it is wider in caliber and what? There is presence of hostration. So, placed peripherally, wider in caliber and there is presence of hostrations. This is large bowel obstruction. And here also you can see air fluid levels in step ladder pattern. So, this is large bowel obstruction and the previous one was small bowel obstruction frequently asked in exam. Frequently. Now, this question for you guys tell me what is this sign? And in which condition this sign is seen? What is the name of this sign and in which condition it is seen? Shambhavi, you are correct. It is target sign. Target sign. Very good. So, here you can see this is target sign. On ultrasound also, this is target sign. And all of you know that when one loop of bowel enter into another, this target sign, it is seen in into susception. So, this is target sign and it is seen in into susception into susception. So, what? One part of bowel enters into another, into susception. Clear guys? Now, here these are the two other image based question. You can see here, this is the bowel loop. So, this is known as what? Claw sign seen in into susception. One part of bowel entered into another. So, you can see here that coiled spring sign. So, these are two famous image based questions asked. One is claw sign and another is coiled spring sign. Claw sign and coiled spring sign. Shipra, snow cast, Ankit Kumar, Ankit Gujar, all of you are correct. Now, tell me guys, this is on barium minima. What is the name of this sign? Special question for you guys. Barium minima, what is the name of this sign? <coughs> name of this sign. Yes? Waiting for a reply. Bird of prey, Shivangi, very good. Bird beak, very good. Bird beak, bird of prey, ace of spade sign. So, this is bird beak sign. On barium enema, it is seen. So, it is seen in which condition? <coughs> it is seen in which condition? Yes? It is seen in sigmoid volvulus. Very good. So, if I am talking about barium swallow, bird beak is seen on ecclesia cardia and barium enema, this is seen in 
sigmoid volvulus. This is seen in sigmoid volvulus. So, the name of this sign bird beak sign, bird beak on bare minima. So, this is bird beak on bare minima, guys, sigmoid volvulus. Very good. Can you tell me what is this condition? What is the name of this condition? <coughs> yes, sigmoid volvulus. Very good. And what is the name of this sign? Name of this sign, coffee bean sign. You can see there is bent inner tube. You can see omega sign. So, there is coffee bean sign. The patient is having bent inner tube. So, there is bent inner tube and there is omega sign. Bent inner tube, there is omega sign. So, coffee bean sign, bent inner tube, omega sign. Again, it is seen in which condition? Sigmoid volvulus. Frequently asked. Clear, guys? Now, can you tell me what is the name of this sign? <coughs> Waiting for your reply. <coughs> Shruti Sushil. What is the name of this sign on X-ray? Ankit Gujar, very good. Cecal volvulus, this is cecal volvulus. And can you see the appearance? This is looking like kidney bean. So, this is kidney bean sign. And this kidney bean sign, it is seen in cecal volvulus. This is cecal volvulus. Clear, guys? And you know, you know, this is also known as comma shaped cecum. In cecal volvulus, there is comma shaped cecum. So, comma shaped cecum is there in cecal volvulus. Clear, guys? Comma shaped cecum. Next, you know, in this case, there is transverse ulcer. Tell me, and in this case, there is longitudinal ulcer. So, question, transverse ulcer, it is seen in which condition? In ileum, transverse ulcer, it is seen in which condition? Lena, tell me. Transverse ulcer, it is seen in which condition? In ileum. Arjun, it is not typhoid, it is tuberculosis. So, transverse ulcer, it is seen in tuberculosis. Longitudinal ulcer, this is seen in typhoid. Longitudinal ulcer, seen in typhoid. Transverse ulcer, it is seen in tuberculosis. Now, see this. Here, this is the IC junction. IC junction is here. It means cecum is pulled up. And here, you can see the terminal ileum is having narrowing because of persistent narrowing because of stricture. This is pulled up cecum, pulled up cecum and this is string sign of Cantor. What is the name? This is known as string sign of Cantor, string sign of Cantor. Clear guys? So, tell me what is the diagnosis? Waiting for a reply. The string sign of Cantor and pulled up cecum, it is seen in which condition? Yes, all of you know it is seen in GI tuberculosis. GI tuberculosis, you know that string sign of Cantor and Sterling sign, string sign of Cantor and Sterling sign, both of these are seen in GI tuberculosis as well as Crohn's disease. Both of these are seen in GI tuberculosis and Crohn's disease. Okay, guys? Okay? So, this is GI tuberculosis. Can you tell me what is the name of this diverticulum? Diverticulum which is located on anti mesentric aspect, single, it is congenital, characterized by rule of 2. Name of this diverticulum? Appu Hariharan, you are correct, Appu. This is Meckel's diverticulum. Meckel's diverticulum, it is congenital, single, true, because all three layers are there and it is located along anti mesentric border. And last question of this session. What is the name of this colonoscopy? This is CT reconstruction of 3D reconstruction of image with the help of CT. What is the name of this colonoscopy? Name of this colonoscopy. It is created by CT. Yes, so obviously it is not real, it is virtual colonoscopy. What is the name? This is virtual colonoscopy. Virtual colonoscopy it is created by 3D reconstruction of CT images. Clear advantage that we can visualize 
pathology outside the lumen because it is CT. Disadvantage in the colonoscopy we can take biopsy, but by virtual colonoscopy you cannot take biopsy. And what you can see here? You can see here this kind of diverticula. So, on virtual colonoscopy you can see patient is having colonic diverticulosis. The patient is having colonic diverticulosis. Clear guys? So, patient is having colonic diverticulosis. Clear? This is virtual colonoscopy. Okay? So, you can see this picture also. Tell me what is the name of this sign? Name of this sign. <coughs> what is the name of this sign? Again, it is seen in diverticulitis, diverticulosis, and this is known as saw tooth appearance. This is known as saw tooth appearance. So, the name of sign, this is known as saw tooth appearance. Clear guys? Frequently asked question, this is saw tooth appearance. There is another question on x-ray, on minima, this kind of appearance, thumb printing. Can you tell me this thumb printing is seen in which condition? This is thumb printing. Can you tell me this thumb printing, this is thumb printing, thumb printing, thumb printing. It is seen in which condition? Thumb printing. Waiting for a reply. And guys, you know that it is seen in ischemic colitis. So, thumb printing, it is seen in ischemic colitis, ischemic colitis. And all of you know that what is the most common site of ischemic colitis? The most common site of ischemic colitis, it is splenic flexure of colon. This is splenic flexure of colon. Clear guys? So, this is splenic flexure of colon, ischemic colitis, splenic flexure of colon. Clear? Now, what is this? Multiple adenomatous polyps. So, this is last. Multiple adenomatous polyps. This is FAP. So, patient is having multiple adenomatous polyp. How many polyps are there? More than 100 adenomatous polyp. And all of you know that how much is the risk of malignancy here? There is 100 percent. There is 100 percent risk of malignancy. So, in these patients, there is 100 percent risk of malignancy. What is the name of gene mutated? This is APC gene, APC gene and where this gene is located? Chromosome number 5Q21. It is located on chromosome number 5Q21. How much is the risk of malignancy? There is 100 percent risk of malignancy. All of you know that this is an autosomal dominant condition. This is an autosomal dominant condition. Okay? autosomal dominant condition. Can we discuss one or two more? So, see this one and tell me it is seen in which condition. There is hypermelanotic macules uh, involving lips, perioral region and buccal mucosa. It is seen in which condition? Waiting for your reply guys. Yes, first person Apuhariyaran Shambhavi Dogod. It is seen in Pute Jagar syndrome. This is seen in Pute Jagar syndrome and on Pute Jagar syndrome which polyps are seen? There are hamartomatous polyp. There are hamartomatous polyps with these kind of hypermelanotic macules. Hypermelanotic macules, you know, most common site is small intestine, and in small intestine it is jejunum. Pure Jagger syndrome, it is having maximum risk of carcinoma pancreas. All these are questions. There is maximum risk of carcinoma pancreas, guys. Clear? Can you tell me the appearance? on barium enema. What is the name of this appearance? See, what is the name of this appearance? Guys, tell me. On barium enema, what is the name of this appearance? Shivangi, Shambhavi, very good. This is apple core appearance and this apple core, this is apple core appearance and this apple core on barium enema, it is seen in carcinoma colon. So, apple core appearance on barium minima, it is seen in which condition? Carcinoma colon. Very good guys, very good, very nice for your interaction, very good. Can you see, this is accordion, so this is known as accordion sign. You can see the presence of pseudo membrane in the lumen of colon, presence of pseudo membrane in the colon. On CT, this is known as accordion sign. Tell me, what is the name of this condition? Very good Shambhavi, very good pseudo membranous colitis. This is pseudo membranous colitis. 
So, the name of this condition, this is pseudo membranous colitis. This is pseudo membranous colitis and on CT what is the name of this sign? This is known as accordion sign. So, on CT name of this sign, this is accordion sign, pseudo membranous colitis, very good, phidoxamycin, very good. Now, you can see in Crohn's disease, the earliest pathological lesion in Crohn's disease, earliest gross pathological lesion, this is after sulcer in Crohn's disease, earliest gross pathological lesion, it is after sulcer and you can see how it looks like after sulcer. So, this is Crohn's disease, earliest gross pathological lesion after sulcers and earliest radiological finding again it is after sulcer. Clear guys? Can you tell me what is the name? This is rose thorn or raspberry thorn appearance and rose thorn or raspberry thorn appearance it is because of presence of linear fissure. So, there is linear ulcer or fissure, linear fissure or there is linear ulcer. So, linear ulcer or fissure this is known as rose thorn or raspberry thorn appearance again seen in Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease guys seen in Crohn's disease, Ankit. Now, you can see here there is long stricture reaching up to IC valve. So, long hose pipe stricture of terminal ileum reaching up to IC valve and this corresponds to the stricture known as string sign of Cantor. So, again in Crohn's disease, there is long hose pipe stricture of terminal ileum and this leads to string sign of Cantor. Again it is seen in which condition? Crohn's disease. Very good guys, snow cast pro, no, Jamal it is not seen in ulcerative colitis, all of these are seen in Crohn's disease. Okay? Now, can you see this is fat halo sign, here you can see there is low attenuation fat around the bowel. So, low attenuation fat around the bowel, this is known as fat halo sign. Guys tell me this is seen in which condition? In which condition there is creeping fat, fat around the bowel, creeping fat, no, 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 it is not angium hypoma. it is around the bowel, not in the kidney. Guys, I am talking about Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Yes, Crohn's, very good, because in Crohn's there is creeping fat that is creeping fat, fat around the bowel. So, there is low attenuation fat, fat halo sign seen in Crohn's disease, very good. Now, can you see what happens? Here you can see that there is creeping fat, clear? So, fat is creeping and it is going to, you can see here, wrap the bowel. So, this kind of circumferential wrapping is going to occur, creeping fat, again it is a feature of Crohn's disease. So, it is a feature of Crohn's disease, clear? There is another sign, this is known as comb sign, comb sign and what is this comb sign? This is vascular jejunization of ileum. This is again seen in Crohn's disease, vascular jejunization of ileum, Appu Hariyaran, very good, vascular jejunization of ileum, this is comb sign, clear? So, guys, it was very, very good interaction. Tomorrow again we will meet at the same time and we will discuss rest of all the image based questions. See, these are very, very important. So, we will be having another discussion tomorrow. Yes, I love this kind of interaction. All of you were so good. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks a lot. And I will be eagerly waiting for all of you tomorrow at the same time, okay? Till then. Take rest, study hard, take care of yourself, bye-bye.